are with us this morning. Tickets for the fall dinner tomorrow evening are still available at the parish office. Takeouts will be available. Baked goods for the dessert table can be brought into the center all day tomorrow. This is a much needed fundraiser for our church. Hope to see you there. There are short surveys at the end of each pew. Please take a few moments to fill them out and place in the collection basket. Your input is important to us. Prayer teams are available after Mass today in the front of the church to offer prayer for you or for any of your intentions. All are invited to attend the reception being held in the link after Mass this morning in honor of Sister Margaret Franzese's 50th anniversary jubilee. There will be a second collection today taken up for World Mission Sunday. There's a book of requests at the back of the church. These are to record your special intentions. We pray for these daily. There's a custom here at St. Mary's. At the end of the final hymn, we all kneel, silently saying three Hail Marys for the next one among us called Home by God. At this time, we ask you to silence your cell phones. Our opening hymn is number 496 in the Gather Hymnal. Today's readings begin on page 136 in the Sunday's Word, Missalette. Please join us now in our call to worship him.
the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. It is in faith that we come to this time and place to worship and praise our God. It was in faith that Sister Margaret Francis said yes to God in her profession of religious life. It is in faith now that we approach the Lord, asking His healing, His mercy, and His compassion. Lord Jesus, you call us to be a faithful people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you show us the way to the Father. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you intercede for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only God the Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit. In the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. <coughs> Almighty ever living God, grant that we may always conform our will to yours and serve your majesty and sincerity of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to be seated as I invite my young friends forth. Good morning. Good morning. So I want you guys to, to do something with your faith today. Do you guys all know the birthday song? Happy birthday to, you know how that goes? Well, we're going to change it one little bit, okay? Instead of birthday, we're going to say anniversary. Okay, can you guys do that? We're going to turn around. Sister Margaret is right here. Sister Margaret has been in love for 50 years. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary to you. Israel had the better of the fight. 
But when he let his hands rest, Kamala had the better of the fight. Moses' hands, however, grew tired, so they put a rocking place for him to sit on. Meanwhile, Aaron and Hur supported his hands, one on one side and one on the other, so that his hands remained steady until sunset. And Joshua rode down Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. The word of the Lord. With the Lord, there is mercy. Number 127.
reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus told his disciples a parable about the necessity for them to pray always without becoming weary. He said, There was a judge in a certain town who neither feared God nor respected any human being. And a widow in that town used to come to him and say, Render a just decision for me against my adversary. For a long time the judge was unwilling, but eventually he thought, While it is true that I neither fear God nor respect any human being, because this widow keeps bothering me, I shall deliver her a just decision, lest she finally come and strike me. The Lord said, Pay attention to what the dishonest judge says. Will not God then secure the rights of his chosen ones who call out to him day and night? Will he be slow to answer them? I tell you, he will see to it that justice is done for them speedily. But when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In our first reading, we hear about Moses and the battle the Israelites have with Amalek. And Moses tells Joshua to go out and fight them, and that he would intercede for them by holding his hands up. As long as Moses was holding his hands up, the Israelites were winning. But he got tired. He became weary. It was hard. So people had to come to help him hold his hands up so they could win the battle. That story is about prayer. It connects to our gospel directly. We need to help each other with our prayer. The judge in the gospel was certainly corrupt, was certainly did not fear God or anyone else. This was actually common in that time. This was not a Jewish judge. This would have been someone appointed either by Herod or by the Romans. They were magistrates. And they usually took bribes and favored people with resources that they gave to them. So for the people hearing this parable, that would have not been unusual. What would have been unusual was the widow. You see, the name widow actually means in Greek, one without a voice person who no one hears or sees. The judge is so afraid of her and renders the decision because he's afraid she will strike him. Now the word strike actually, the direct translation is to be given a black eye. And he would be given a black eye in public. He would be shamed in public by her continual insistence. She's unusual. She's persistent. She does not give up. There's a story about Mother Teresa. Years ago, Mother Teresa went to visit a very wealthy man to get money for an AIDS hospice and clinic. His name was Edward Bennett Williams. He was a wealthy attorney. He had many famous clients. At one time, he owned the Washington Redskins and the Baltimore Orioles. He was a powerful man, yet he worried about seeing Mother Teresa. In fact, he had his partner stay with him in the room and told his partner before he came, I'm going to be meeting with a living saint, and I need your help. I know she wants me to get money for her for this AIDS hospice 
and I really don't believe in it, so I'm going to need your help to say no. So, Mother Teresa comes, and she gives the story. After the story about the hospice and about the needs of the people, William, Edward, Edward Bennett Williams speaks to her and says, thank you. We believe in this cause, but at this time we really don't feel that we should be supporting this. So our answer is no. Without missing a beat, very humbly and gently, Mother Teresa said, let us pray. They all bowed their heads and prayed. When she was done praying, she began her speech all over again, word for word. <laughs> At the end of the speech, the judge thanked her once again and said, listen, Mother Teresa, we really, we really can't do this. We, we're committed in other places. We don't believe in this. So the answer is no. Mother Teresa said, let us pray. <laughs> Edward Bennett Williams threw up his arms and says, okay, where's my checkbook? <laughs> now, it may seem like Mother Teresa did this on her own. The truth is, one of the things Mother Teresa had done was set up something called prayer partners. People who would pray for her ministry, pray for what happens with it. So she had a lot of people praying for her for this meeting. She did not go in alone. She had people holding her arms up as she went through it. Just like Moses had his arms held up. Years ago, there was a young family who had a child. The child was born with a severe heart defect. This child had to need surgery immediately after being born, and then again several times in her life. At six months old, a major surgery was done on her heart, and while doing so, she was clinically dead twice, but brought back. She became legally blind from that, and the doctors held out very little hope for her, believing that she would only live to 10 or 12 years old. But the family, during this entire time, let their faith community know they needed their prayer. And their faith community members contacted other people. And there was a wide network of prayer praying for this family. And the family felt themselves being lifted up. Their arms were being held when they were weary from all the prayer people were doing. The little girl's name was Katie, my daughter. She will be 34 next month. I'm here to tell you prayer works. We don't know all the time the results of our prayer, but we never, never, ever need to give up. I know that from personal experience. Many of you do too. Prayer is not asking God for what we want. It's beating with the heart of God for those who are in need among us. The last question in the parable that Jesus asked, but when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? I've spoken many times before that faith is a verb, it's not a noun. We can have a quantity of faith and never use it. Faith unused is not faith. Faith requires us stepping into it, praying for others, caring for others, touching them, beyond our understanding. Will the Son of Man find faith on earth when He comes? As long as we keep praying, 
He will. We have many people to pray for. Take a bulletin home. Many people on that bulletin have asked us to pray for them. Put it on your refrigerator every time you see that. Pray for these people. Let them know that you are helping to hold their arms up in a difficult time.
We come to you seeking your saving help. Strengthen our faith that we may continue the work of building your kingdom. Will you live and reign as our God forever and ever? Amen. Our hymn for the presentation of the gifts is number 669, the servant song, number 669.
blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and the work of human hands, that will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and the work of human hands, that will become our spiritual drink. Dear brothers and sisters, in my sacrifices and joys, may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. And the Lord has set the sacrifice to your hands, for the praise and glory of His name, for our union with all His holy church. Grant us, Lord, deep pray, a sincere respect for your gifts, that through the purifying actions of your grace, we may be cleansed by the very mysteries we serve, through Christ our Lord. right and just to give you peace, and raise to you a hymn of glory and praise, O Lord, Father of infinite goodness, for by the word of your Son's gospel, you have brought together one church from every people, tongue, and nation, and having filled her with life by the power of your Spirit, who you never cease through her to gather the whole human race into one. Manifesting the covenant of your love, she dispenses without ceasing the blessed hope of your kingdom, and shines bright as the sign of your faithfulness which, in Christ Jesus our Lord, you promised would last for eternity. And so with all the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly here on earth, while with all the church, as one voice, we now acclaim.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood. The blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
Let us offer to one another a sign of peace.